Today we're going to talk about the wrong way to make root beer because most YouTube videos that show you how to make root beer from scratch using roots get something wrong. And it's a very important aspect which I'm going to tell you about right now. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. Now if you look for a root beer recipe online you're usually going to get taking your roots or your barks, putting them in a pot and boiling them for 20 minutes. That seems to be the longest I see people boiling these roots. Now that doesn't actually extract much of the oil at all. So what you'll find is that most people when they finish their root beer it's kind of a pale swampy pond water color. It doesn't mean it doesn't have flavor, it's just got a very mild flavor. And the reason for that is roots don't give up their flavors easily because they're designed to be wet all the time. Same with the inner bark where most of the flavor comes from. These have a lot of cellulose fiber in them and actually extracting that using water because oil and water do not mix doesn't really work that well. If you look at traditional root beer recipes or even before they were called root beer, uh, if you look at these recipes pre-1850, they boiled them for 12 hours. Now that's the important part. The, the lowest I've seen it is four hours. And there's a reason for that. And that's because one, extracting the flavor from the cellulose material is very hard, especially when you're not using a solvent that the oil would dissolve in like alcohol. Even my trusty percolator here, when we use you know, ground up herbs and spices, which are ground up very fine, more like this here, and then extracted with alcohol, which oil readily dissolves in, takes 48 hours to get 100% extract, or at least 90% extract. Using water for 20 minutes is going to get you very little of the extract. So you're putting a lot of money into the pot and you're getting very little out. Now the reason they used to boil it for 12 hours was because you're going to break down the cellulose a little bit and that's going to allow more of the flavors to come out. It's also going to help with emulsification. So I've done a video over on Patreon. It's a Patreon exclusive called Thermal Emulsions. And there's just this, to summarize quickly, the more heat you put into the system, the smaller the particle or oil droplet size will get. And the smaller that droplet size, the more stable your extract will be. So instead of immediately separating out, so oil always floats on water, it's very hard to keep it into solution. The longer you heat something, the longer, the smaller the droplet size, the more stable it gets. They figured this out intuitively, that the longer they boiled, they got a stronger flavor and it lasted longer instead of separating out into two layers of oil and water, as oil and water do. So even if you macerate this, where you take your roots and your barks and you put them in alcohol in a big jar, it takes two weeks to extract the flavor. That's, uh, you know, 10 days maybe seven days if you're lucky and it's in a warm environment. But extraction is not the easiest thing to do. So water's not your best friend and putting something on a, in a pot for 12 hours, uh, your energy input right now are gonna be so high that it's not really worth it. And it has been known that the longer you boil it, the more light ends. So some of the terpenes and other light flavors that boil at a low temperature, obviously get boiled off. So you end up with more of the heavy flavors and that's fine. That's what, you know, traditionally they did pre-1850. But the whole industry has moved away from that. Originally to extract, I have a video on how to make an extract and you would just basically take all of these roots and herbs, pack it into here, put alcohol at 60 to 65% ABV into this, let it sit for 24 to 48 hours extract that and then you have a concentrated root beer extract. So a lot of people buy the root beer extracts and just add it to carbonated water and add sugar. And yeah, that's a reliable method for making root beer, but it's the same recipe everybody else in the world's using because you know, you're just buying a standard product. You might as well just buy it pre-carbonated for convenience. Now, if you wanna make more interesting root beer flavors, formulate your own. Essential oils are the way to go or flavoring compounds. 
And I know everybody talks that it's really hard to get sassafras, which is the original kind of root beer flavor. You can substitute it. They do have this product here, which is Safrol Substitute. And I will be using this in the future, but sassafras is hard to find. And you don't really need it when you have substitutes like this, which we'll be getting into and in how to use them in the near future. You just simply can't drop this into water and expect it to taste good. But it is fairly easy to use if you know how to use it. But you can also start using things like cinnamon oil and tarragon has a similar flavor profile to sassafras, not quite, but the anise element in root beer comes from sassafras. So often you'll find tarragon to be a substitute because it has an anise-like flavor. Most root beer recipes use uh, aniseed or star anise and a variety of other things. But wintergreen is probably the most important thing nowadays for root beer. Wintergreen is found in birch beer. So it's historically, there's kind of a crossover that modern root beer is more like birch beer than traditional root beer. But using some ingredients here, we can replicate old root beer recipes without using sassafras. Now the one other downside of boiled root beer and is that you, Generally to carbonate it, most people ferment it. And that just produces alcohol. And even the temperance movement back in the 1800s realized that anything fermented was alcoholic. And sure, if you ferment it overnight or for a couple days, the alcohol level is really low. It's still 1% alcohol, which is not considered non-alcoholic. That has to be 0.5% in North America. And the longer that root beer sits, even in the fridge, the more it's gonna ferment. So if you give it a week, it's probably gonna be up around 3%. And this is kind of the problem, is that if you're feeding it to your kids, you probably don't want to at, you know, after a week. So if you're making a fresh homemade root beer, you know, the, the fermentation method's not the recommended method. Uh, carbonating it is the way to go. And yes, the temperance movement did not like root beer for a number of reasons back in the 1800s. One, it was alcoholic, even mildly. And number two, it was called beer, which was against their thing. Now, root beer can be more adult, and I'm not talking in the alcohol sense. I just did a video on hot drops over on my Patreon page. It's an exclusive video over there. And this, ad, this was added to root beer back pre-1850, maybe a little later, but some of the recipes actually called for the addition of this and it gives root beer a far more spicy, interesting flavor. So if you're interested in that, we'll be using this in the future. Uh, next couple of videos when I start working on root beer recipes to actually give that more of a kick. So this is why root beer, boiled root beer is kind of not really worth it unless you're gonna put 12 hours of boiling time into it. And I don't think anybody really wants to do that. I think most people want whatever's easiest so I will show you easier methods, whether that's using an alcohol extract or using essential oils to actually formulate a proper root beer. By the 1860s and the 1870s, almost all root beers were made using extracts or essential oils. They, again, these, can, these are 100% pure. They're just the flavor extracted from the roots and barks for root beer. And the one thing they do avoid, the nice thing about this, there's a natural astringency you get from boiled root beer that a lot of people don't like. And with this extract method or the essential oil method, you get that smoother flavor. And then if you wanna add the astringency or the heat or whatever you want into it, you can dose that appropriately, for example, with hot drops into that after you get your smooth root beer then you can doctor it any way you want to get it to be more, you know, however you desire it. So I will be talking about that in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope this explained a few things for you. So I'll see you in the next one.